All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Jessica Gelter from Arts Alive. Um, we're the regional arts support organization for the Monadnock region of New Hampshire. Um, and the surrounding towns. This is one of our uh, lunchtime series doing little workshops on some local resources that can help support arts projects and small creative businesses throughout our region. We're super excited to have Jen Risley with us today, who runs the local crowd Monadnock um, and also works in the marketing department at the Monadnock uh, Food Co-op. So hi, Jen. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us here today. Thanks. And we usually start our events with something called a land acknowledgement. So I just want to take a moment to take a pause and say um, Arts Alive and I am streaming to you from, uh, from the land that is called Endakina. It is home traditionally of past, present, and future Abenaki communities, particularly the Sokoki tribe, um, where I am right now. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that this is the space that we are in right now and acknowledge and appreciate the privilege that we have in being here and continuing our work here. So with that, I'll just pass it right over to you, Jen. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Jess. And thanks for thanks for being here, um, everybody. Uh, so as Jess mentioned, I'm the program manager for the local crowd, Monadnock, which is actually hosted by the Monadnock Food Co-op, my day job. So it, it works, dovetails nicely together. Uh, the local crowd, or TLC, Monadnock, is a community-based crowdfunding program that empowers individuals to support the businesses and initiatives like yours, um, the ones that grow wealthier and healthier communities. So um, if you're new to the idea of crowdfunding, uh, crowdfunding is a practice of sourcing small contributions from a large number of people to provide funding for a particular effort or a particular pursuit, um, whether it's a for-profit, nonprofit, we're here to help. Um, what we do is we guide teams through the process of planning and executing a successful crowdfunding campaign from the very glimmers of it to the end, wrap up and all. So we want to help you turn an awesome community, your awesome community connections into financing. Um, and since we started in 2017, we've helped 27 campaigns raise over $230,000 from 2000 supporters in the Monadnock region and beyond. doing this multitasking here. There we go, oh, don't wanna do that. Um, so I just wanted to highlight two art-based campaigns that have used or are using the local crowd. Friends of Public Art, which you guys are very familiar with, Georgia. Um, they raised $3,613 last fall to purchase a sculpture and it was designed and created by a local artist. And then they installed it at the Keene Airport near a newly formed labyrinth. Um, they also offered rewards. I'll actually go to their page. Sorry. Uh, so you can kind of see how um, our crowdfunding platform looks to the people coming to your campaign. So we have uh, this hop that has a video and a little captures how many people have supported your campaign, how much you've raised, what your goal is. This one is done. So the green bar is at the very top, which means that they raised more than they were looking for. So that's what we're always hoping for as well. Um, that's not helpful. <laughs> Try not to use my cursor. Um, so we help each person really uh, synthesize our story, talk about why, so that you're not just telling people what you're doing, but why you're doing it. And that really draws people into it. And they wanna be part of that story and they wanna give some dollars. Um, on the right, you'll notice it's something that says campaign rewards. You can opt if you're running a campaign with us to offer rewards that either you donate. So you can think of it as a pre-sale if you have some kind of artwork that you wanna give as a reward. But the best part of the local crowd is that you can ask your friends and neighbors. If you have a friend who runs a coffee shop or you have a friend who does something really cool, um, you can ask them to donate a reward and how that works is the person giving it donates it. And the person supporting gives gives the funding, you keep the funding, the supporter gets the reward, and hopefully that person who donated um, 
the reward also gets a future customer. So it is kind of a, a marketing tool as well as a, just a feel good tool. Um, so that's kind of how this, this platform or crowdfunding page. Oh, there's somebody else joining us. We'll let, we'll let them come in and we'll finish up the, there it is. We've got one more person who just joined us. Welcome, welcome. Um, so that this campaign page kind of shows your story, how it's progressing, gives like social proof that you have people following you and wanting to support you. And then as you get more people who are giving money, their friends are gonna give money and so on and so forth. So that's really the goal is to not make it viral, but just leverage your own connections to draw kind of their second tier community people towards um, your campaign. Uh, the second art like art related program is actually um, the Lake Sunapee uh, region is putting together an arts atlas. So they haven't launched their campaign yet, but they're working together through an arts and business alliance with their chamber um, and other partners. And so what they intend to do is they want to do an artfully uh, illustrated map that they can hand out, especially during the tourist season. Um, so definitely have all the assets included in this map, um, art galleries to historical societies and libraries. And then their second phase is actually um, an inter interactive digital map. So they have some of the funding already. So they'll be able to load that into the campaign up front and show that they already have support and then asking people to help them fund this phase two. Um, and so they are actually been working with us for about two or three weeks and I'm just scrolling down, sorry for the rapid scroll, but they've already started to think about what is their why as individual team members. And that's really fantastic to document, like why do they want this art atlas? What is it going to bring to their, their community um, and to their, all their organizations? So like I mentioned, this is an alliance. Oopsie. Um, so they have uh, Sullivan County Center for the Arts, the Chamber of Commerce and the Art Center all came together and formed a team. Um, they didn't have to form a, you know, an organization or a business if they didn't want to. They could just come together as individual and collaborate on this on this partnership. So we're excited to uh, work with them, and, and we hope that we can find similar projects in the Monadnock region um, to seed through the local crowd. So let me see. Um, so just to go back to my slides here. So really what I wanted to do, and I know that's only been 15 or 10 minutes, but I wanted to find out like, what is what are you passionate about that maybe we could see together through the local crowd? I'd love to hear questions and what your thoughts are in terms of a campaign. And Hi. Hey, Erin. <laughs> Hi. Um, well, you know about my project. Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm, and Jess and I've been talking a lot too, and um, I'm kind of thinking about how to grow the art table um, and um, not kind of thinking about it, very much thinking about it. It's kind of all I think about right now. So, um, you know, I just dropped off uh, uh, 50 more kits at the co-op on Sunday and 50 more last night. And I want to keep, I know, <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, and I want to keep growing the project and I'm hoping to um, turn the art table into kind of a small art center um, in the Nanak region. And so, um, you know, obviously thinking about different ways to fundraise. And one of the things I had talked with Jess about is um, doing a Kickstarter, because in the past I've done a Kickstarter, but, you know, hearing about you is much more appealing to, you know, to sort of um, keep it local. And mm. um, I, I'm excited about the idea. So I guess I, I would... I mean, I have my, I kind of have my why, but I have my other branches and other things that I want it to go to. So um, I'm, not, I'm not sure where the question is. I'm sort of talking it out with you. <laughs> That's great. Keep okay. talking. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I want to sort of, I want to keep up the kit initiative, but I also want to figure out a way to um, link myself into that, keep the kits available for free, um, link some teaching in, um, a, a center where I can do some in-person and continue my remote teaching, mm -hmm. a center where um, I'd like to have mentoring and internship um, spokes um, to kind of hit all of the people in the Monadnock region. 
cool. and beyond, you know, however that looks like. <clears throat> I want to collaborate with a, a whole bunch of people. So I just am thinking about kind of this dynamic place where people can come make stuff and um, learn about all kinds of different things, social justice themes. Um, yeah, so trying to, you know, trying to raise the money is next. <clears throat> yep, yep. And what's great about the local crop in Enoch is that um, it's a process. You know, you can come to this crowdfunding program in anywhere you're at, whether you're just exploring a little seed of an idea and you want to see if other people think it's a cool idea. And maybe you just go to um, you want to crowdfund for a thousand dollars and see if you can get, you know, a dollar from 100 people or, you know, you just want to get a small amount to show that your idea has legs yeah. or it could be like, I want to, you know, refurbish this this area and I'm gonna need $15,000 to do it. You know, it can, it can be in any degree and you can launch campaigns as many times as you want with us. It's not like one time and then we say, sorry, um, it really is here to be a resource for our community. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, we call them playbooks. We have five playbooks along with videos to kind of take you through the process. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing compared to doing it on Kickstarter is that you have a, per a person in your neighborhood to, to call mm -hmm. on it when you run into obstacles. It's not like you're doing it alone. Um, I think that's, I love doing this work. It kind of brings out all of the good skills I have and just empowering people to tell their story. And and like, I, I think there are just so many people in our community that are hungry to, to give towards something that they can see, especially right yeah. now, a tangible, yeah. beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what's great after, it's, it was challenging, we had like, eight campaigns ready to roll right before COVID hit. And then everybody went, well, I can't do my campaign. I can't ask for something when, you know, just people need, you know, <laughs> they need to take care of themselves. We need to support um, those basic living uh, necessities. So now everyone's kind of coming back. Um, so we've got, we've got about a half a dozen um, businesses that are ready to, ready to start with us. Right. Um, so it's, it's a great time to kind of join joined up with us right now because we have some good momentum, but um, we we do have a request for proposals that we send out twice a year, but we take proposals uh, on a rolling basis. Okay. And really the reason why we do the, the RFPs are just because everyone thinks about it, doing a crowdfunding campaign, but it's not until you see that, oh, there's a deadline and we give a little incentive, but um, really we want to work with people whenever. Okay. Table. You don't awesome. have to wait for those things. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then do you, do, does it go, do you wind up reaching out of the region too? Like, do people kind of find, cause I, I do have a lot of friends that are, you know, mostly their philanthropy is online. So that's, you know, I want to kind of reach to some of them as well. Yeah, you can definitely do that. I mean, it, it takes a lot to, like I said, to come become viral. We did have one campaign that kind of did that where you know, a friend of a friend of a friend found out about it and then they started actually promoting the campaign for this person without them even knowing that oh, cool. they were doing it. So all of a sudden he's like, where's all this money coming from? And the guy's like, oh, I was, you know, sharing it with my my crew. So um, that's another thing we talk about a lot in the playbooks is affinity groups, because you have all these groups that support you locally and, and just out there in the world. So making sure that you reach out to them as well to let them know that you're even thinking about doing it now. You don't have to, it's great to not wait until you have the campaign launch because you don't want to be like going, okay, money please. Right. Um, you really want to be like hooking them in earlier and getting their email addresses because that's really the best, best, most effective way to get, to get supporters. Social media is awesome for getting people to be aware that you're doing it, but I can boost and post and share as much as I want on social media. It's not until I send that email, either a personalized one or an e-blast where all of a sudden people start giving. Okay. It just, they yep. respond to that being asked. Yep, yep. in a personal sense. Great. I think great. that's a really, really great comment too is, is you can't just like post and put it up there in the world like in a general sort of way. Yeah. Something thing you said when you were describing the crowdsource fundraising like method was around the idea of it, it starts with your friends and their connections and it is a social sort of excitement building. Yeah, it's, um, I actually got trained, it's called the local crowd. It's a Wyoming based 
LLC. And so we are a community here in the Monadnock region. There's another community in the Upper Valley. And then there's one in Wyoming right now. And so they always say, you know, crowdfunding is it art, but it's also a science. And so we're here to kind of let you know about both aspects. And since you're all creative artists, you know, you've got that, that down in terms of that beautiful story you'll be able to, to show people, not just tell people. Um, and then we can help you with, you know, like this is the reason why you do this. It might seem kind of strange. Like the, the strangest thing for me was when they said, okay, before you actually launch your campaign publicly, you want to have, already have 30% raised. And I'm like, well, that seems really random, but um, it, it's just from looking at all the analytics of past crowdfunding campaigns. So people who don't know you very well will see that you already have 30% and they'll want to give kind of like that positive peer pressure or, yeah. or excitement around it where they don't want to be the first one to <clears> give <throat> because they're like, wait a second, why isn't anyone given? So um, that's kind of part of the, the science behind one, one aspect of the science behind crowdfunding. Jen, this seems like a really great opportunity, like a really great learning experience and the opportunity to raise a lot of money and a nice platform. Um, what does it cost? Oh yeah, I keep, it keeps coming up in my head and then I forget to mention it. Um, thank you for that. So if you've done Kickstarter, like Aaron has, you know that um, just like anytime you purchase something online, the credit card companies or the processing companies take some money out. So our that that money is kind of already, you know, part of the, the fee. And then the local crowd, um, instead of making you pay out front for our services, is that um, we have a 5% fee on anything that comes through electronically. So if you get a check offline or you, you want to use your grant money as a matching challenge, we're not going to take 5% from you. Um, it's just that 5% that comes in online. And then what we do is we reinvest that uh, three and a half of percent of it comes back to the Mananoc region so that we can do what we do. Um, and then the other part goes to the Wyoming um, group so they can have, they can better the platform and give us more training and things like that. So that's how we're, that's how we're funded. Of course, you can probably guess that most of the work I do is volunteer at this point because we're still, you know, we're still in those startup stages. Um, but it pays in other ways, <laughs> just in, yeah, being able to help and, and make great connections with, with our community. So that's how we pay for it, darn it. Um, Jen, I'm curious, what are some of the, the like cool rewards partnerships that you've seen over the years? Yeah, let me think. Um, well, it's always great to see like, you know, Prime Roast and Brew Bakers and all of our great, you know, local businesses um, always support one thing. Um, I know I had somebody who offered to do drone video. We have some folks that will have like, um, we actually, for the restaurant project, Laura Carboneau is offering either an in-person or a virtual cooking class, a personal cooking class. Um, you know, it can really get creative. It doesn't have to be something that, you know, costs you a lot. It could be something that you just like to do. Like Jessica, you got those cute kittens. It could be like, once COVID is over, you know, it's like, come on over and, you know, have a, have a, a tea with me and, and just talk about Arts Alive, having that, that personal time to connect with you. Um, a lot of restaurant owners, you know, it could be showing behind the scenes of your restaurant. So it's, it's uh, not meant to just be a, like a, a, a sticker or a t-shirt or anything like that. It could be something very creative and very personal. Um, that I know for me, I've also um, given rewards to have a 30 minute coaching session for, for social media marketing. It's not something I do for, you know, I don't have my own consulting firm. I just do it every day for the co-op. So it was a nice way to go, okay, I'm just gonna sit down with somebody for a chat and just see where they're at and what questions they have. So it, it really is a, another way to connect with people is using those rewards. Lynn and Marsha, I see that you're here and I was curious if, if you have any projects percolating or any questions that you might like to um, address to Jen today. Hello. 
I think mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I wanted to say is that, you know, when I mentioned to Aaron that it's a process, it's also a really great way to work on your, your business because it gets really busy. Um, so we're going to, it's almost like a little mini business plan that we can help you work through. Uh, mm. Looking through a marketing plan, looking at, you know, how are you going to do outreach? You know, we can help you with a press release. So we can, um, we also have an assessment yeah. that we have people um, go through that kind of, you answer all these questions, you see what your strengths are in terms of crowdfunding. And then we can help you fill in some of those gaps as well. Um, so it really is meant to be, even if you get like through module four and you decide, you know what, this isn't for me, you're still gonna get a lot out of it um, with our, hopefully um, with the resources that we, we share with you. So we can we can start an RFP even though it's sort of rolling, but we can you know like okay that's great. Yep. Yep. And then yep. I I also know that from the Kickstarter community, it really is a good idea to show support for other projects. You know, mm -hmm. not just use the platform as you know something for your own. And I'm sure that's something that you are all looking at as well. Um, it's I, I have to say being like supporting other projects even. I love this stuff because it enables us to be philanthropists, even at the $25 level. Right. So, um, you know, supporting other projects has been really fun. And, and I, I learned the hard way too, with rewards. I really like what you're saying. I never thought about that. Um, I got my first campaign. I was so swamped because my rewards were like, I had way too many. Some of them were hand bound books. I was, it was, yep. No, yeah. that's, that's another thing too, that, you know, we have a little section that just says, you know, how much is it going to cost you to actually fulfill this reward? Are you charging enough? Or, yeah, that just to think through it, because it can become um, pretty overwhelming fast, if you have like really beautiful things to, to, uh, to offer, for sure. So that's the other thing that's been really nice is that what we do have, we call them sponsored rewards from other other businesses, we ask them if they would be willing to, you know, take care of the distribution as well. And that kind of takes a lot off of, of you. So you're not doing, you know, 25 rewards and dispersing them. You may be only doing three and then those other community members are helping you with others because usually they can come, they can say, well, you get the skip card, but you have to come into the coffee shop to get it. And then they get you with some cool cookies or some other, you know, big smiles. So right. um, that's, that really helps. Um, the other thing with, um, with the local crowd is that if you only reach 50% of your goal, you still get that money. We really want to empower, you know, our, our teams to do the best that they can and decide for themselves. So if you raise 50%, but you can't really do what you committed to, you know, that's up to you to go to the supporters and say, you know, listen, we were hoping to get this much funding, but we didn't. So we're happy to give the money back to you if you want but that's never happened. You know, that's the thing too with, um, it's like Kickstarter. Um, you're giving updates all the time through your emails um, so that people understand. Usually if, if you said you're gonna get a reward by a certain time, as long as you say, hey, you know, I, I just need a little bit more time to manufacture X, Y, Z. And people are pretty forgiving as long as you are open, to, open with them. Jen, I'm curious, one of the things you talked about was this idea of um, teams. You mentioned, you know, having team members give reasons why they why they were involved or supporting it. Can you, can you explain how a team plays into one of these campaigns? Yeah, that is also one of, besides thinking about your why, it's a forming a team. Because if you don't have a team with you, you're going to have to be spending that many more hours every week on the crowdfunding campaign. You're not going to have all the skills at your disposal if you don't have a team. So you might be good at writing, but you're going to have another friend or colleague that's good at social media. Um, so you really want to be thinking of the skills that you need to bring to the table. And again, it's that science. Usually teams of um, three or more people raise more funding than people alone. Um, I've done both. I've worked in a team and I've, I've worked alone and it's just so much more fun and so much more effective um, because to do it all yourself, you just, you start to lose sight of little things that would make a big difference in your campaign just because you're so busy trying to do it all. So teams are great. Wild question. 
what or how how do you find those people i mean Mm. particularly these days when we're all so isolated and in our own bubbles Mm. you know besides like asking your partner or asking your mother-in-law or you know Mm. how can how can you build those relationships outside your bubble to really make a a strong and effective team yeah i mean for the most part it's been just asking the people you're thinking of because you never i never ask people for help So that would be the first thing I'd say, hey, I'm doing this. Would you be willing to do X for me? You know, making it kind of a real specific ask, not are you willing to come to weekly meetings? Because they'll be out the door. But if you could find some way to have them be engaged, um, usually people do more than what you ask them to do that way. and I think too, it's it's maybe even um, I haven't tried this yet, but if you are do have an affinity group and you know that you're you haven't connected with an individual in that group, but you just go ahead and say, "Here's what I'm doing. Are you interested?" You know, if there was a crowdfunding campaign, kind of in early stages, Arts Alive could host one of these lunchtime events and then just describe what you're doing and what kind of help you're looking for and see who comes to the table. Um, I don't know if anybody else has ideas. I, we've been pretty lucky that um, we've been finding, you know, it's just a matter of yeah, reaching out to a two or three people. But there are those who have a lot of trouble doing that and end up just doing going alone. We're not going to tell them no. We're just going to tell them it's going to be a lot harder. So, because it means that all the work is on one person, right? Yeah. All, yep. And that means also their network is potentially smaller. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. It's true. Hmm. So has anybody else done any kind of crowdfunding on other platforms? Because that usually bubbles up questions when you're like, well, this is how we did it on Kickstarter. Has, does that work with the local crowd? Is the, um, I, I remember my first one, I, I was so daunted by making the video mm. and like agonized over it, spent way too much time. And I finally emailed them and she was great. She's like, listen, most of the people that are going to give you money will know you. So just hit record and put it up. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's very true. It's like, you know, they want to see people want to see your face and they want to be able to hear you. So those are kind of the biggest, the biggest things, but um, my partner does video work. So we're lucky in that respect. So we have sample scripts. And so it's just kind of a formula. Um, We usually say to keep it, you know, under definitely under two minutes. And I think that's always something that um, not everybody wants to listen to, but it it doesn't have to be long. yeah, and just showing yourself as a, as a person, it doesn't have to be slick. Um, yep, yep. So okay. just what the advice they gave you was, was was spot on. And again, the science behind it is that when you have a video, you tend to raise more funding. Is there an example video you could share with us or one that? I don't know how it'll show um, through the through YouTube. I know I sometimes run into that, but I can I can definitely share, share some ones with you. Um, should I do it through a chat or? Oh, let's just, let's play it. <laughs> then we oh, can you want to go for it? All right. Yeah, Let me um, here. Let's make sure that the, the audio settings are set to share the audio through the computer. So when you go share screen, oh, click play. Okay, you might have to come up. Okay. I'm going to go through the restaurant project because this, um, we upgraded our platform um, in January, probably before then. Um, so it looks a little bit different. So I'll go to that campaign that I think is ending in two days. Might take a little while. There we go. Well, let's see how this one plays. Maybe I'll go on YouTube to watch it. <laughs> Jen, what is, right. the, what is the usual time? limit that were how do people kind of run how long do they run their projects yeah great question um we usually recommend 30 days just because longer you end up getting really exhausted um the mananoc um restaurant project ran for a month and a half 
Um, and that was just because one of our teammates, you know, got the flu, not COVID. Um, so we just kind of were able to push it back because it's not like locked in like it is with Kickstarter or some, I don't actually know for Kickstarter, whether they say you, if you don't, if you've launched it with 30 days, you got to keep the 30 days. Is that kind of how Kickstarter works? I, I think so. Yeah. I don't remember. I yeah. think, yeah. um, that they, and they, but they, same thing, they, they recommended, you know, to do a shorter time, which was interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause it, it does get whole, you know, it gets, it gets old really fast when you're by yourself. Yeah. Let's give this works here. Hi, I'm Luca Paris, and I want you to join the Mananak Restaurant Project. Join Please. Culinary Journeys, the local crowd Mananak, and Please, all the partners and help yeah. stimulate the restaurant economy. Work. Many Could industries you... were hit hard during the pandemic. Could you share your screen while you do that? Oh, that's very helpful, isn't it? Well, I'll be. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's the little things, you know? It is. It always is. And, you know. Okay. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go back. Dun, 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 dun. Hi, I'm Luca moving. Paris, and I want you to join the Mananak Restaurant Project. Join Culinary Journeys, the local crowd Mananak, and all their partners in helping stimulate the restaurant economy. Many industries were hit hard during the pandemic, and we're looking to incentivize you to go out and help restaurants get back on their feet. The Mananak Restaurant Project is supporting the local food scene and their salaried, hourly, and tipped employees. The Mananak Restaurant Project wants you to be involved, and we're asking if you receive a restaurant gift card from us, you commit to spending it within the next few weeks, and then pledge to spend a little bit more than what's on the card. Let everyone know about the project and that you're part of the movement. Take pictures, social media, tell everyone you know. The Mananak Restaurant Project relies on our community and that is you. We can make a difference and starting today, we will. And you notice with that one, we don't have a lot of faces, but that was really COVID <laughs> um, because we couldn't have Luca really come and be filmed um, just because of the pandemic. But yeah, that's definitely something that we we love to see people's faces more in, in videos. That was nice. It was it was very succinct and got at the got at the sort of like emotional story of like you're doing good in community and you're helping yeah. these real people. It did have faces. It had the faces of many people that were gonna yep. be seeing the benefits from it, which was nice. Yeah. Yep. And that that's something that um in the storytelling part of the the playbooks really like making the supporters be the heroes. It's Yes, it is a, a campaign about you, but it really is making the individual feel like, wow, I can make a difference or wow, I'm, I'm doing this with all of my friends and neighbors. So that's, that's definitely something that's challenging to work, work through sometimes, but um, it can be really fun if you start to understand what you're, what you're doing and embrace those resources. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And um do you want to share anything else with us on this screen share? Oh, I don't need that. I'm still sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jess. <laughs> we're going to watch the puppy dog in our video next if we weren't careful. Yep. <laughs> that would be fun. I'd be okay with that. Uh, maybe at the end today. <laughs> um, gosh, yeah. So, so, you know, we talked about, okay, we talked about the sort of mindset of this social network and ways that that really impacts your success at, at this crowdsource fundraising. We talked about building a team, like your core people who are going to really leverage their networks, um, storytelling and those videos and having faces and making, making the donors, the heroes. I love all that. Um, is there, is there, what else should we be, ta be talking about when we talk about crowdsourced fundraising and, and when we talk about the local crowd? What else should folks be thinking about or preparing for or know about? Yeah, well, I think it's just knowing that you can come to me at any time. You don't have to have, you're, you don't even have to be really sure if you wanna launch a campaign, you know, that I'm here to bounce your ideas off of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, 
we can start the process, you can end the process. I like what Aaron said, you can, you can give to um, campaigns that are happening now, um, just to see how it works. You could become a, you know, they actually have these little champions, you can sign on to be part of the platform so you can see what's behind the scenes. So um, whether you're thinking about crowdfunding or you just wanna see more artists use this tool, um, you know, come, come see me. <laughs> that was another thing I wanted to ask. It's not just for nonprofits. I was noticing mm -hmm. it's for, I mean, the Sentinel had a campaign that you showed. And so it's, it's not just, you don't have to be a nonprofit. You can be just an artist or a business or a. Yep. Or an initiative, you know, a startup kind of idea. Um, yep. You don't have to be incorporated. So how does that is how does that work? How did how does yes how does that work? How does that work? <laughs> um, so we use um, Stripe. So the individual just or the campaign team has to have one checking or savings account, and the money basically from the supporter goes right into the bank account, your bank account, and then the, you know the fees get taken out of, in, ahead of time. So like when Orchard Hill Breadworks did their um, campaign for a mill, they were probably at the halfway point and they had enough then to put a deposit down on the mill. They didn't have to wait to the end. They could just go, you know what? We feel like we've, we've got enough. And so we'll take that money, put a deposit down and keep crowdfunding for the rest. Um, so that's kind of nice that you can decide, you know, as soon as that money starts rolling in, um, how you want to leverage it. That's amazing. That's huge. Oh. <laughs> oh, that face. Wow. That, that's just, that's, yeah, that's huge. Possibilities have just opened up. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> not going to sleep at all tonight. <laughs> right. Right. And, and you can, like, I, I know that um, the art hop didn't end up, you know, continuing, but the original idea of the art hop crowdfunding campaign was just to do a little bit for lights. And then a year later or six months later, do a little bit for another thing and another thing. So it was just like sort of having to in invest all this money in something really big and all this time and really big. They're like, let's just package it up and get it started. And it is a great marketing tool, especially if, you know, you take the time to send out a press release and you've got a, a, a really unique idea. It's probably going to get picked up locally, if not in other places. So it is that how else can you leverage it's sometimes it's not even the money it's it's other things that come out of this how can you best leverage those those other beautiful things that come out of crowdfunding yeah. Yeah. wow and of course i'm always talking about the positive side of crowdfunding but it is a lot of work um yeah. and it can be stressful for people but that's what i'm here to kind of touch base keep it real <laughs> yeah this is this is Go ahead. Uh, this has been awesome. I, I have to jump out because I have to go to another meeting. But um, I, this was just so timely and I'm, I really appreciate it. So oh, cool. No, I'm glad you can make it. It's so much more fun to talk with people than talk at people. So I know. I know. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you both so much. Yeah, oh, thank you. I'll see you. I'm sure I'll see you both soon. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye. bye. Well, so, thank you, Jess. Thanks yeah. for awesome, all the awesome questions and thanks for having us. Well, and thanks here. for putting like a friendly face to this whole program. It's yeah. less scary when there's like, oh, it's it's just Jen. I can just, just Jen. email Come Jen on. and it'll be great. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Oh, great. So again, do you want to put that slide up with your contact information before we sign off today? Sure. Oh, no, no. <laughs> there it is. There. Wonderful. It Jen at the local crowd.com. Excellent. Jen at the local crowd.com. Yeah. And your phone number's even there. Yep. And That's if you're at the co op and tell them to call for me, I can come on over and, and talk anytime now that we're getting a little bit out of the COVID time. So. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Great. Great. And if you want to check out the projects that are on 
the local crowd monadnock right now, like the restaurant project? So if you um, go to our homepage, it'll have this little logo that you can click on and you can find out the latest about the project. Um, like I said, we're just wrapping up our crowdfunding campaign. We raised a little over $30,000. Um, and it just talks about how we're actually running the, running the show and um, what kind of things we might do in the future. Because this was all about you know, responding to the challenges that restaurants are having, having because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But we called it a real general thing, the Mananlock Restaurant Project, because we were hoping that maybe in the future, the restaurants that we helped today will actually give back somehow in the future. Um, also that we can take this model of when maybe a certain industry or a certain location has some kind of hardship and we can take the same model, you know, fundraise to do gift cards that we give to people who are gonna spend more than, them, than the gift cards are worth. Um, or and or doing something that will provide for people who you know are less fortunate who need you know these basic needs but we're going to give them these gift cards to go to a locally owned business rather than a chain store or um, online giant that might take some of the money out of our economy so we're looking for a win-win-win here so <laughs> we, we had fun doing this for sure awesome yeah well, thank you so much. And thank you for all you do for the Monadnock region and our local businesses and our small businesses and, and everything. Well, thanks, Jess. I appreciate being here. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Have a great afternoon, Jen. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Check out the local crowd, Monadnock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.